friends welcome or welcome back to my channel in today's video i am so excited you guys christmas is starting on my channel so i have some dollar tree christmas diys for you and of course their farmhouse so if that's something you're interested in definitely stick around click that red subscribe button don't forget to tap that bell and all that way you're notified every single time i upload and if you enjoyed this type of video please give it a big thumbs up that way i know to bring you more content just like this so with all that being said let's jump into today's diys and i would also like to thank felix gray for sponsoring today's video and i'll tell you guys a little bit more about them in a little bit because i'm so excited and you guys do not want to miss out so let's jump into today's diys Okay friends, so to start off this DIY, which might be one of my favorite DIYs that I have ever done, I start off with these four Dollar Tree box drawer looking decor pieces. I'm not really sure what you want to call it, but you can see what I'm using and I just flip them over and use my blow dryer to remove the stickers. I set those aside and then I take these longer signs from Dollar Tree. Now these are not the longer ones that I normally use. These are in between the really long ones and then the shorter ones if that makes sense. So they're kind of like the medium size but I also take off the hangers off of six of those as well as the stickers. Once I've done that, then I go in with my mouse sander and I just sand all of those edges smooth, like where the stickers were and where the staple, where the staples were holding in the jute hanger. Next, I take a piece of foam board and I lay my sign down and I just cut a piece long enough to be the back part of our this is going to be a fireplace if you did not see that already but this is going to be the back part and this is going to act as kind of like the stability for our, far, our fireplace so that way we have something to glue to if that makes sense. So once I have that cut down then I go in with some Jenga blocks and I just glue them along the back edge once again that way I had something to glue the foam board to. Now here in a minute, I'm going to explain something to you that I wish I had cut this a little bit shorter, but like I said, I'll explain that in a minute. But once I had the Jenga blocks down, then I kind of flip it up. I glue onto the Jenga blocks with some hot glue, and then I lay down the foam board and glue one of those six signs to the side. You want to make sure that you're checking the back, that the back is nice and secured to that side piece. And then I just took a scrap piece of dowel rod that I had in my scrap wood bin and I cut it down to the size of the sign. I glued it down to the side and then I also took another sign and glued that directly to the dowel rod right into the front, making sure that it all lines up nicely. I repeat that step for the side piece and then I repeat all of those steps for the right hand side. Okay, so before I go any further, I'm just going to um, explain this like while I'm right here instead of a voiceover because I think sometimes a voiceover, like you just don't really realize what, like I can't explain it that great on a voiceover. Pretty much. So if I was doing this again, I would cut this, um, this with shorter and then leave this block this with, um, like over this way. That way this could sit flush with this back here because now I have to go in and cover this. That way, like you can't really tell that there's this gap back here, if that makes sense. So um, just keep that in mind when or if you make this for yourself. Now that I have my side pieces on, I am going to take another piece. I kind of measure it in the middle and I never use like 
a measuring tape or ruler. I mean, sometimes I do, but I like to just lay it up on my piece and then mark it and cut that way. I just seem to have better luck, but if you'd like to measure, you can. But I do cut one piece of the sign and I also cut another piece for the um, bottom side and I do just cut that out of cardboard um, just to um, close that all in and once I had those glued down then I go in on that back part like I was just talking about and I glue some Jenga blocks down with some hot glue just to close that off Okay, so I just realized that I misspoke back there. Sometimes these videos that I edit go quicker than my mouse does. But anyway, um, before I attach the top part, I painted the background black, which you can skip that part because in the end, I end up making a completely different piece for that part. So I would just skip that if you make yours um, the way that I made mine. But to attach this front piece, I wanted it to be nice and sturdy. So I just took some really small dowels that I get from Amazon and all the stuff that I use from Amazon or Chalk Couture or any of that stuff is always linked in my link tree in the description box below. So if you just click on the title of the video, a box will appear and you will see um, all of the links are now in one place. Click here and then you can just page through and literally every single link that I have attached to me and all things crafty is in that link tree so anyway once I attach those small dowels with some hot glue then I attach the front piece as well as the bottom piece which the bottom piece is obviously the cardboard like I was saying and then I go in from the top and I just load that thing up with some hot glue to ensure that it won't go anywhere Next, I take these wood pieces from Dollar Tree, which might I add is really impressive, you guys, to find all the new wood pieces from Dollar Tree. Um, it's just mind boggling and it blows my mind, but I absolutely love it so they can keep it coming. But I do just take the stickers off and then I attach all three of these to the top of my fireplace. And now a word from our sponsor, and let's take a quick little break to talk about Felix Gray. So again, I would like to thank Felix Gray for sponsoring today's video. So about a month ago, they sent me these Lovelace frames. And what Felix Gray is, are a blue light blocking lens company that sells prescription or non-prescription lenses. So they have something for everybody. And what they do is protect your eyes from harmful blue light. What blue light is, when you are looking at a screen or a tablet, TV, anything like that, it gives off a blue light that can cause severe headaches and can affect your sleep. And it's really just not a good thing. And for me, I'm up until three, four in the morning sometimes on the computer, and I am not worried about it at all when I have my Felix Grey lenses on. The things that always bother me the most after being on my computer at night are being tired, headaches, and just really sore eyes. And when I have my Felix Grey on, I don't have any of those issues. Now, I wanted to test these out because I don't bring you guys any products that I don't truly believe in for myself, but I definitely wanted to bring these to you because I bought my daughter a pair. I am very, you know, conscious about her brain and the blue light affecting her. So I definitely recommend these if I would buy them myself. So with all that being said, definitely check out Felix Gray, linked in the description box below. Thank you again, Felix Gray, for sponsoring today's video. I also wanted to mention that you guys, they are really lightweight. They're very comfortable. They are made from acetate and they are also handcrafted. So you know that every single pair is made to perfection. And check out the link in the description box below. Again, thank you, Felix Gray. And let's jump back into today's DIYs. 
Next, I take these wall plaques from Dollar Tree, and I've seen a lot of people do different things with these, and um, I definitely want to do something different in the future as well. But for this project, I start by taking the stickers off of the back, which again, you can probably skip that step because I end up doing something different than I originally had planned. Um, but then I do just paint the back and the sides with my ink Waverly chalk paint. I then take some more of these wooden pieces from Dollar Tree, um, four of them to be exact, and I take the hangers off of them and set those aside. I then just take those signs that we just painted and I glue them together with some hot glue side by side. And then I, and then I'm getting ahead of myself. Slow down, Melissa. <laughs> and then I attach those to the top of my project. Now you can see here that I had pulled it up because I attached it too far to the front and I wanted to move it back a little bit. So I did that and then I glued those wood pieces down to the top to cover up that wording. And um, I don't know if I mentioned, but I did get those wood pieces from Dollar Tree in the crafter square section. Next, I take four of these boxes from Dollar Tree, identical to the ones that we used for the base of this fireplace, but these are the smaller versions. Next, I go in with my white Waverly chalk paint just to give this all an even coat and have it be one color. Because I'm going to wrap this with contact paper, sometimes contact paper is really thin and once you lay it down on whatever surface you are using or, you know, laying it down on, um, depending upon what color it is and how thin your contact paper is, you can see right through it. So I do just like to start with a clean base. I then just take this contact paper that I had left over from a different project and I just wrap this entire bottom part of my fireplace. Now Dollar Tree sells plenty of contact paper. This is just what I had on hand. I had so many different ideas running through my brain for this project. I originally was going to use the new Dollar Tree wallpapers but I didn't really like the way that that looked so I ended up pulling that up and cutting that out and then this this is what I ultimately decided on, but it's your preference and whenever you make your own, then you can choose on whatever finish you like. Now the easiest way I found to do this was to start on the right hand side, wrap it over to the left hand side, and that is only the part above the first part if that makes sense. So not the base of the fireplace or the step but only the fireplace itself is what I wrapped at first. I left the opening, um, you know, I left that alone and just continued to wrap it. Once I had wrapped it, then I went back into the opening. I cut along the top edge of the opening and then I cut a slip, a slip, yeah. I then cut a slip slit down the middle and then just wrapped it down either side. I wasn't worried if it went all the way to the back because um, the new version that I make for the insert um, comes, you know, closer to the surface of the fireplace opening. Um, I wasn't too worried about it if that makes sense, but anyway, um, if you're going to put something all the way to the back of your fireplace, then I would consider trying to wrap that a different way. But once I had the top part wrapped, then I did go in and wrap the step. Next, I go in with my Kona stain and I stain the top of the fireplace mantle. And then I also had this uh, trim piece laying around. This I had this from back when Sophia and I did a video back in the spring. So I thought that it would be perfect to trim out this fireplace mantle. 
Once I had all of my trim pieces measured out and cut down, then I do just attach them with some hot glue. Now, if you want this to last, I would consider using a stronger holding glue like E6000 or, you know, super glue, something of that nature. But for video purposes, I did just use some hot glue. And then I went in and I painted the floor of the insert of the fireplace with my ink Waverly chalk paint, as well as down around the front of the step. Next I take a piece of cardboard and I just measure out the insert of the fireplace and then I cut that down to size as well as painting that with my Ink Waverly chalk paint. Once again, I had these wood slices in my stash from last year around Christmas time. Um, you can get them from Arteza. I do believe I have an Arteza link in my link tree in the description box below, um, but I do just arrange those on my insert. And then while I was waiting for my husband to come home because I needed him to cut me some more pieces that he found out in my yard, um, I did just go ahead and cut some decorative trim pieces for the front of my fireplace and I cut those down to size and stained those with my homemade stain. Once I had these little twig pieces cut up from my yard, I did go in and just kind of fill in the blank spaces. And then for the really, really tiny spots that I knew none of my pieces would fit, I did just take my scissors and just cut random pieces and arrange those that way. And then I secured those down with some hot glue. Play with this you guys get in the christmas spirit turn on some christmas music turn on your favorite show i'm not really sure what you do to get into the mood but you guys i'm so excited and this did not take me long at all but i really just enjoyed like arranging these and putting this together this really was a passion project of mine and i just love the way that it turned out but i have so many good ideas for this little fireplace let me know in the comments down below if you guys want to see a revised or to be continued version because I could make so many cute little decorations to go on this thing but anyway I want to show you guys here that I kind of messed up and glued my top decorative trim pieces down and the little side piece was the wrong piece so they are crooked and when I went to go pull them up to change it because it was driving me nuts, it did pull up the contact paper and I don't have any more and <sighs> once I realized it, I was able to fix the bottom pieces. So all in all, the only crooked pieces are the top trim pieces, which in the end you can't really tell. I can tell, but... It is what it is. Eventually, I will rewrap this and change those out. But for now, I love the way that this turned out. I did add some Jenga blocks and add in my wooden insert piece. And I secured that down with some hot glue. And then literally, you guys, I know that this took a little bit of time. But this was a love project. I had so much fun making it. Look how cute it turned out. And it's perfect for all my Christmas decor. So let me know in the comments down below if you guys will make one. Or if this project is a little too complicated for you but either way i appreciate you stopping by and um like i said let me know in the comments down below what you guys think
Okay, friends, moving on to DIY number two. Now, I have these tree cutouts from Chalk Couture, but you don't need these because technically, um, I don't use the actual tree in the end. I'm just using the shape of the tree. So if you have anything this shape, you can certainly use that. But because these were the perfect shape that I wanted or that I was going for, I did just go ahead and use these. But I took them out of the packaging. Um, I did show you how cute they are. They have interchangeable stars and they also have a transfer that goes with it. Um, so that's super cute. If you want to check that out, check out my shop in my link tree. Um, but anyway, I just take them out of the package and wrap them with some plastic. I then take some jute from Dollar Tree. I tie a knot around the top and then I just go on and wrap this entire thing. Now this did take the entire roll. Um, so it took two rolls for two trees, but all in all, $2 for two trees. I mean, really, it probably costs about $5 to make both because of the Mod Podge. Um, and the bases so really like five six bucks but really um for how high end it looks you really made out like a bandit so anyway um once i had both of them wrapped then i go in or i guess just one of them here huh <laughs> once i had it wrapped with my jute then i go in with my mod podge and i just really soak that thing and then i leave it out to dry overnight and i do that to both I then just cut the end once they're dry and I kind of like shimmy it off of that tree and I guess I lost the footage of me taking it off of it but it's really simple. I mean anybody can do it. Um, and then I just attach a scrap piece of dowel that once again I had in my scrap pile and I attach that with some hot glue and then I had these fairy lights that I believe I got in a pack of like 24 from Amazon that are really cheap and they have really tiny battery packs. So I glued the battery pack to the inside and then I just wrap the lights around naturally. And you can use stars for the top of this from Dollar Tree, but because I just had these white ones right here, I'm a lazy crafter, you guys. <laughs> I just grabbed them and glued them on because they were convenient and they were right there. Next, I went in on one of them with some Mod Podge and some uh, glitter from Arteza. And I just did like a bronze color and a gold color and just mixed that glitter and then shook off the excess. Last but not least, I take these small square dowels, or yeah, square dowels. No, Melissa, they're they look like coasters to me I'm not really sure but they're square pieces from Dollar Tree and I use my faux stain to stain both of them last but not least I um, screw in some pilot holes to the wood piece as well as the dowels and then I attach them both with some screws Now to finish this off, I felt it was a little bit plain at the bottom. I'm sorry this is a little bit out of frame, but I had a little bit of this Excelsior left over from Easter, and I know normally you don't use this at Christmas, but I felt that it gave like the perfect pop to this plain color. So let me know in the comments down below if you would use something like moss or if you like the look of the Excelsior. But literally these were so easy to make. I love the way that they turned out and they look so high end on such a budget. Thank you. 
I would like to thank Claudette and Jessica for the craft supplies. If you enjoy my work and would like to support my channel and get a shout out on my next video, check the link in the description box below, or you can just go to buymeacoffee.com slash allthingscrafty. But seriously, you guys, whatever way you support me, there's tons of ways to support your favorite creators, like watching the ads to 30 seconds, clicking on the ads, liking, subscribing, sharing the videos. There's so many different ways to help us and you don't even have to spend a dime to do it. So anyway, whatever way you support me, I appreciate you and let's move on to DIY number three, which is super duper easy. I just took one of these little lanterns and I made sure that it worked before I did all the work of like sprucing it up. And then I went in with my mini chip brush and my antique wax and I just heavily dry brush all the way around this. Next, I created a simple bow. You can use any ribbon of choice and some greenery. And I just kind of clipped up the greenery and glued it to the top of this lantern. And then I finished it off with the bow to the middle of the greenery. And little things like this are just so simple to make cheap. You can do it in seconds and it looks so high end again on a budget. And that's my favorite part because with the holidays coming up and don't even get me started on all the shipping issues and the price hikes and I, I could go on and on but literally if we need to save money this holiday season this is it because things are crazy right now but things like this this would even be such a perfect gift for like a teacher or a loved one so anyway you guys I love the way this turned out and I know you'll let me know what you think as well. Thank you guys so much for being here for DIY number four. So I start off by taking three of these signs from Dollar Tree. I lay them down on my transfer from Chalk Couture to make sure that they fit. And I see that they're a little long. So I do just use my utility knife and I cut all three of those down to size. If you guys are liking this video, would you consider subscribing if you haven't already? And if you're already subscribed, please hit that thumbs up. Those thumbs up really help my channel to grow. So to move on, I take some large popsicle sticks and some hot glue and I just attach those. And then normally I'm a big fan of just fuzzing your transfer until you can't fuzz anymore. But because I've used this in the past and these transfers pull up that cheap Dollar Tree faux wood, I did go in with my surface wax a very, very, very tiny bit. And then I have my little helper here. We cut the star away from the transfer. And then with these bigger transfers, because I don't know if you can tell, but this transfer is, I believe, 18 by 18. So it's a pretty good size or it's... Yeah, I think it's 18 by 18. It's either 12 by 18 or 18. Yeah, it's 18 by 18. Sorry, you guys. Um, but because it's pretty good size, sometimes they're a little bit tricky. So the easiest way to use these is to peel the backing sheet away from the transfer. And then you'll fuzz on top of the transfer. So just leave the transfer sticky side up and fuzz that way. 
and then I have my helpers here and we transfer on the bless this farmhouse Christmas with my black chalk paste and we transfer on the tree with my gold shimmer paste per my little helpers request and then as you can see you guys that's what I love about this this is so easy a five-year-old can do it she does it by herself she loves it she picks out the colors she transfers it on she fuzz she does it all literally and if she can do it, I know that you can do it. So if you want to shop these products, you can check the link tree in the, in the description box below. But once we have that all transferred on, then we wash our transfers, leave them sticky side up. That way you can use them over and over again. And then we had a little spot here and I told her to quit licking her q-tip but she's five so whatever but we just wanted to show you how easy it is to clean that up so we just used a little bit of water or spit i'm sorry you guys i know that's nasty but it is what it is you guys know my famous line and we just cleaned that up very easily and then i had this scrap trim piece once again which I didn't have enough for the entire frame so I thought that it would look really cute to just put at the top and the bottom so I measure that out and cut that with my miter shears and then I paint them with my white Waverly chalk paint. Now I'm impatient so in the end this looked exactly like the color of my sign but I would just wait a couple minutes and then go in with your antique wax and your uh, mini chip brush if you like dry brushing, um, but mine just ended up looking like mud, which I didn't really mind because it looks cute to me, um, but I did just dress that up with my fairy lights and I wrapped those around the trim pieces and then I kind of fed it down the sign. So that way I could attach it to the bottom piece of trim as well. So what I did was I took the first trim piece and wrapped it around. I glued that piece down and then I glued it to the back, fed it down the side of the back of the sign, glued it in place, and then I glued it to the front piece of trim and then glued that down with some hot glue as well. And then I glued the battery pack to the back of my sign. You guys, this is what I love most about Chalk Couture. I literally made this sign in about 30 minutes when normally the other ways that I use to make signs would have taken me hours, if not days. So anyway, it's just a matter of preference. There's so many different ways you can make signs. This is my favorite way. Let me know in the comments down below which is your favorite way to make signs. Okay, you guys, we're in the home stretch. If you guys are still here, leave a Christmas tree emoji in the comments down below or just say Christmas tree. Either way, I appreciate you guys. But anyway, this is so easy. Like, I don't even know if I should have included it, but I just take a tree from Dollar Tree. I take a set of fairy lights and I just kind of unravel them and then hold the battery pack at the bottom. I wrap my fairy lights around the tree and then once I'm satisfied with the placement of my lights, then I glue down the battery pack to the back of my tree base. 
and literally you guys that quick and easy and this little tree looks so high end and you could use Dollar Tree lights but I just had a huge pack of these and they're actually a lot less than a dollar so you get such a high end look and nobody would even know that you used Dollar Tree items. Okay, tell them. Say Merry Christmas. <laughs> Say Merry Christmas. <laughs> Say we're going to show you the last DIY. <laughs> oh, somebody's grumpy. Okay, you guys, so we're just going to wrap a present, literally. I take an old box and some brown craft paper from Dollar Tree. And the best way to do faux presents is to just use hot glue because you can smooth it out and make them look really nice. But I just wrap this obviously just like you would wrap a present and I secure it with some hot glue. And then once I wrap the brown paper around, then I have this 18 foot ribbon from Walmart, I believe. And I always use the ribbon that it has on there. Some come with it, some don't, but there's no need to waste it, you know? So I just use that and I start by wrapping it around um, the one side and then I cut it and wrap it around the other side, securing that down with some hot glue. And then I just repeat those steps with some burlap ribbon. Next, I make kind of like a faux bow for the top of it. So you just want to take a long piece of ribbon and then you fold the one side in and glue it down. And then you fold the other side in and glue it down. And then once that glue is dry, then you can fluff it up. And then, like I said, I'm going to use this bow from the packaging of the ribbon. And then I glue that to the middle on the opposite side. And then I glue that down to the top of our present. Next, I uh, cut two of these pieces from the kind of lacy ribbon or lace ribbon, I should say. Um, and then I just kind of cut that in half because it is thick and it didn't look it didn't look right like draped over the side of the present so I did just cut that a ha in half and secured that down with some hot glue and then to finish this off I just cut some of that greenery and I just secured that down with some hot glue as well and I just love the way that everything turned out and came together it's rustic it's farmhouse it's Christmas you can't go wrong with any of those things let me know in the comments down below which project was your favorite I'm pretty sure that the fireplace was mine just because I feel like it's my all-time favorite DIY I have ever made, but I know you'll let me know in the comments and I'm always surprised to find out which project is your favorite because the ones that I always think don't end up being your favorites. So anyway, with all that being said, I hope you guys have an amazing week. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. Also, let me know in the comments down below if you guys would like to see a part two of this. I have so many ideas, like I said, to do little decor for this little fireplace, so let me know about that. Also, if you guys wanted the Christmas countdown kit that I did on my live the other night, um, I will also leave the link to that in my link tree because when I went to go order the 12 pack, they weren't there, but now the one pack is in stock again. So I will have that link down there as well. Also, I would like to thank Felix Gray for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to check them out, you guys. Blocking out that harmful light is really, really important. I only bring products that I truly believe in to you guys. So those I truly believe in, I'm wearing them right now looking at the computer screen so definitely check them out and with all that being said if nobody has told you today you are absolutely gorgeous you are worthy and I love you with all my heart and soul don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it subscribe if you haven't already share it with your family and friends if you think that they would enjoy it as well and with all that being said 
check out the videos that are popping up here if you want to connect with me on social media until I upload again. All that information is down below as well. And until next time, guys, bye!